If you put vegetables in front of a child, he's probably only gonna eat it if he's Elon Musk's kid. But if you put fries in front of that child, he's probably gonna go to town on those fries. Potatoes are universally loved by all of us, I think. And today, I'm gonna make them better, hopefully. I'm Mitch May, welcome back to Bourdain. Everybody should know how to use a knife. Use everything, waste nothing. Let's start at the beginning. It ain't that hard, okay? We're learning to cook with Anthony Bourdain's Layout Cookbook. I am a regular guy who has been in and out of the industry many times, and now I've found a passion with cooking. I give you a view of me trying these recipes for the first freaking time. Today we are making pita tau, or potato, or it's tough. This is actually from Jean-Michel Dio. I'm including this, of course, because it is in Anthony Bourdain's book. These absolutely look amazing. I say that about everything, but these look very nice. I get to use a ring mold, which I've never done before. That's actually pretty cool. We're basically boiling off red bliss potatoes. We're mixing them in an amazing concoction of herbs, and then we're gonna bake them. And then, of course, they're topped with freaking cheese. Can it get better? I don't think so. I don't think so. Well, the one fear I have, of course, is overcooking them. I tend to just cook things too far, past the point of when they should be. If you'd like, grab this book. You can follow along with me or just watch me f it up or do amazing. We ain't gonna make a potato dish without delicious potatoes. These are Red Bliss potatoes. They have a thinner skin. I don't really know anything else more other than the red and you know. As of late now, I've been reading the whole recipe. I kind of go about my plan of action. First thing, we're gonna boil off these potatoes. Place the potatoes in a medium pot and add water to cover. Okay, they're not covered perfectly. What the freaking fresh? You plan? <laughs> yeah, I've recently been planning ahead everything that I do. There we go. Yeah. yeah. While they're cooking for 20 minutes, we're gonna chop up a ton of herbs. A lot of olives. I don't like olives. I don't know why. I don't know anyone that likes olives. It's been a while since I actually. <laughs> that sucked. Let's just give them like a rough. Calls for N-I-C-O-I-S-E olives. I couldn't find them. And I asked the woman at Wegmans if she had them. She did not. She did say these were similar. So basically, if this recipe turns out wrong, it's all her fault. Next, we have a tablespoon of fresh thyme leaves. If you saw my episode with the fish, getting these freaking thyme leaves, a bitch. Up some parsley, a lot of it. It's pretty prep intensive, but I like it. A lot of fresh flavors going on. Do you need an egg yolk? I know, isn't that cute? I don't, I don't know why I put that in a container there. I'm weird, I don't know what to tell you. Little tip, when you crack an egg, you don't wanna crack it on the edge of something, you wanna do it flat. I would know, I've worked in a breakfast joint, I have flipped many an egg. If you wanna check out like even how I work a double, I'll link that over here. Nice and firm. We're gonna get the egg yolk, so I'm actually gonna fish it. Drop that boy in there. Now we're gonna take the potatoes off the heat, cool under running water. I know, this is a great view, sorry. Ah. When they are cool enough to handle, but still warm, remove and discard their skins. This is like the finest line I'm dancing between <laughs> too hot and like not <clears throat> hurting myself. I'm actually gonna make a power move here. I'm gonna leave some of the skins on because I like skin. I think it provides some flavor. And I noticed on that picture, it looks like there's some skin on these bad boys. So cut the potatoes into small cubes with a paring knife. I'm kind of going with my gut. And that's also why I like pictures too. Delicately, Bourdain says, you're not looking to get mashed potatoes here. Now we're gonna add olives, thyme, olive oil, and balsamic vinegar. Get it all incorporated nicely. That looks nice and mixed. We're gonna set this mixture aside. Now we're gonna make a glaze. Come on over to the stove. We're gonna bring this to a boil and reduce it by half. I always get scared when I boil milk. The one episode, I curdled the milk, I almost cried, but luckily I have a therapist. While that is doing that, we're gonna whisk an egg yolk. All right, it's starting to look good to me. I'm kind of going by texture. It's got more of a frothiness. Ooh, baby. Smells delish. Very round, very like, I'm gonna use this word for the first time ever. Velvety. It's velvety. Now I know. When I hear that word, that is velvety. Add most of this mixture to the cooked potato mix, holding about four tablespoons back. Mix it, not crazy hard. That's what, mm. Actually gonna keep the glaze over on the stove top just to keep it warm. I'm over here squishing it with the fork when I have this beautiful press. Moment of truth. One more. If you're gonna make this, chill your goat cheese. Yeah. I don't know if it should be that viscous, but you know what? You live and learn. Time to plate this thing. Oh, hopefully I caught it just in time. 
almost burnt. Actually, it is burnt. It's charred. Hey, that's okay. Harder than I thought, but you know, I did two little presentations. Clearly a little burnage on the one side. Yeah, that's killer. That's very good. I have to say, the olives, they're there. They're present. They're almost making themselves a little too known. Mm. Mm-hmm. This may even turn me into a bit of an olive lover. That strong flavor mellowed out with the goat cheese. If I were to do it again, keep that creme mixture off to the side. Don't let it get in contact with heat because I think it might have curdled and cooked a little bit. If you can see in the picture, there's just a nice little amount. Maybe not get it as close to the broiler so you can have more control and see when it's going to burn because this literally burned as I was saying. Make this thing up, you know, get a nice sturdy baking dish so it doesn't go when it gets hot. You know what I'm talking about? You've slid a uh, baking sheet in there and it kind of warps and it makes this thunk and that gets closer to the heat. That's why you can see kind of on these, <laughs> one half is burnt. If you're a fan of cooking, you like Anthony Bourdain, or you're into any of this vlog, blog, me just doing my thing cooking, come along, like, subscribe, it'd be awesome. Tell some people you know. And thank you for watching. This was Back to Bourdain. Stay organized and clean up after yourself. You do the best you can.